I've noticed that over the past 10 years or so, there is a phrase that's been popping up in marketing trainings, which is that we're supposed to create irresistible offers. Have you ever heard this? You're supposed to create irresistible marketing, irresistible messages, irresistible offers, meaning offers, products and services that your audience can't resist but buy. That sounds great, right? Well, I'm Use some combination of words or combination of imagery that makes your audience salivate like dogs, <laughs> like Pavlov's dogs salivate and they, they can't even think twice. They're just gonna buy your thing. Would you like to have that happen? Would you like your audience to just not have a second thought? You say something and they just, oh, they gotta buy it because they, they can't resist your marketing, your charms, your copy, your design. They can't resist it. Now that sounds good from the profit per, you know, point of view, like, oh, I, I can make more money. I can have more power over my audience. I can make them do things that I want them to do so that they will change their life and have a better life, right? But let's flip, flip it around and let's now place you in the audience's position. Would you like me to say things to you where you can't resist, doesn't matter what your budget is, doesn't matter uh, if you think it's really, if, you, you, I, if I don't give you a chance to think and you just buy from me, I just want you to buy. I don't want you to think anymore. I just want you to do what I say. I want you to buy my stuff. I want you to do what I tell you to do so that you can change your life for the better because I'm really here to make you, you know, I'm really, I have good intentions for you to have a better life. So you just don't, don't think, just do what I tell you because I know what's better for you. How does that feel? Well, I, I don't think any of us want to be treated that way. We are adults. We have free will. In fact, probably the most valuable thing you have is your free will, is your ability to make choices that are, you know, based on your values, hopefully, but your ability to make choice is what is most valuable about you, what's most unique about you as a human being, okay? The ability to think and make a choice based on your thought. And if a marketer is trying to take that away from you, they are going against the most essential uh, sort of characteristic about you as a human being. But that's what marketing is trying to train us to do today, is to do that to other people. And so I wanna show you some marketing copy that I saw that is essentially trying to teach that kind of stuff to us. Now, let me warn you, this is not, you know, well, I should say, I, when I say warn, I really should say, this kind of copy is everywhere. So I don't even have to warn you because you probably have seen it, but maybe you haven't been conscious of it until this video. I don't know. Let me know what you think. Let me go ahead and share my screen and then we can, we can kind of walk through this together here. Okay. So I saw this on a website and I, I, I'm not, I don't, I don't want you to go looking for who wrote this. It doesn't matter who wrote this or what, what company or what product or what service this is about. Because you know what? I have used this kind of language too. So it's not blaming a certain company or person. It's, it's being, becoming conscious as business owners that it's easy to fall into this kind of thing. So it's not to blame anybody, but it's to become conscious ourselves. That are we doing this kind of thing? And by the way, are we buying from people who are doing this to us? And maybe we should have second or third thoughts. Maybe instead of making a decision right on the webinar, right on the call with them, right on the video with them, maybe we should sleep on it for one, two, or three nights and talk to three or five different wise people about the decision before we say yes to a $2,000 program or a $5,000 program or even a $200 program, okay? So this is what the, the sales page is promising to teach us. You'll learn secrets for sharing what you do that produces instant trust and desire in your ideal clients. Now, wouldn't we want that? Again, if you don't, if you, if you aren't thoughtful about this stuff, you just, and, and you go to your basest instincts, all you want, all we want to do for, from a unwise 
uh, sort of lower human being perspective is to control other people, make them do what we want them to do, because then we can have money and power, right? So that's why we got to be really careful that are we overriding other people? The, the most important thing about other people is their free will, right? Okay, how to share your story about why you love your work so people lean in and get an intuitive hit that they need to work with you, right? Or how to create your unique, aligned, irresistible, what do you do statement or irresistible offer, whatever you want to say. All right, so first of all, secrets. The word secrets, I think is a terrible word to use in marketing because it creates fear of missing out. It basically makes people afraid that they won't get some kind of advantage that other people will get to have security, to have a fulfilling life. And to be honest, there are no secrets. Anything you learn that resonates with you is because it resonates with the deep truth you already believe. Now, if there's some kind of newfangled tactic or technology or tool or process, you could probably find it by Googling it. Honestly, having learned marketing for 10 years, I learned that there are no secrets. Everything is free out there. Everything is free. If you learn how to Google, okay, if you search Google, it's all free out there. And people who use the word secrets are just trying to sell you something. They're using fear of missing out. And when, they, when people use fear, I don't think we should support that kind of marketing. I don't think we should support that with our dollars, with our purchasing dollars. Let's not support it because there's, you can find it for free. Okay. If you're, if you, if you, in fact, come find some kind of program, says, George, there's some secret here. You know, I will send you 10 YouTube videos that are teaching it to you for free. There are no secrets. And yes, you, you might buy someone's thing to support them. And I, I, I thank all of you for buying my courses because you're essentially doing that to support me in part. But it's also you enjoy that I'm putting together some some all everything is free out there and I'm just putting it together in some format that inspires you and you like to be and you know work with me etc but there's no secrets okay it's all it's all out there all right what about instant trust and desire instant trust what is what do you mean instant trust trust is earned trust is built by repeated trustworthy interactions trust is not something you you dangle some meat in front of someone and suddenly, or you, you use a certain copy, you, you write certain things or you've designed certain things and suddenly they trust you. That's not real trust. That's manipulation and that's fake trust, but you've manipulated them to trust you in that moment. But really it's, it's you having power over someone's free will and someone's thinking. Instant trust and desire. That's treating them like a Pavlov's dog, right? Treating them like they are manipulable, right? Which is really unfortunate. And that's something we don't want to be done unto us. So why are we doing that to others? We don't. It's bad karma, really bad karma. And it's also bad for long-term business because long-term business is about actual trust. Real trustworthy interactions creates a sustainable sales in the long-term. And it actually makes your marketing easier and easier. Like these days, I'm so grateful that I have been showing up consistently and built real trust, I hope, with many of you, so that when I when I am selling something, I don't feel stressed out selling it. I just and I don't even try to persuade you. I don't even try to have great marketing copy. I actually am quite lazy in my marketing copy when I'm trying to sell you something. I'm quite lazy. I just like, well, this is basically what it is. I'm, I'm very plain in how I describe what it is. I don't try to make you desire and make you go, oh my God, I must. I just said, this is what it is. This is when it's starting. I hope you join us if you are into this kind of thing. And that's it. I'm very lazy about it. I, I, I don't try to persuade. And I just say, well, if it's something that you guys want, you'll buy it. If it's something that's not you don't want, you won't buy it. And I'll just be more aware of that in the future. So I'll sell you more of what you want because you, you know, it, it'll, you feel that it'll help you, right? There's no manipulation. There's just building trust over time with content and then like I said, even if I do it lazily, I still make plenty of money, right? I still make plenty of sales because again, long-term trust makes your marketing and selling easier and easier and easier. Instead of having to try to produce instant trust because you think everybody doesn't trust you. And by the way, with those kinds of marketers, people shouldn't trust them because they are trying to manipulate everybody who's reading your copy. So the next phrase I want to mention is how to share your story about why you love your work 
so that people lean in and get an intuitive hit that they need to work with you? Do you want people to get an intuitive hit that they need to work with you? Okay, let's, let's, let's talk about this. What is an intuitive hit? Is an intuitive hit something that a marketer manipulates within you? Or is an intuitive hit something that comes from a higher source, your higher self or God or your angels? An intuitive hit is something that is supposed to come from a higher spiritual source. Like somehow God is telling you or your angels are telling you, ah, this is part of your life path. You really should go in this direction. That's an intuitive hit. That's truly what an intuitive hit is. It's not what a marketer should do, right? Or a business owner should do to write certain things that make you have an intuitive hit. That's, they're corrupting a spiritual idea for the sake of gaining money and power over others. It's just, it's terrible. We should not try to create an intuitive hit in people. We should just do what we do out of love and service. And if their source, their God, their angels, or their higher self can tell them that this is the right path for them, let that happen between them and their God, between them and their higher self, not because we said certain things that make them feel a certain way. That is the essence of manipulative and, <laughs> and you know, the kind of marketing that we don't want to be done unto us. That's what I mean by unethical. If we don't want it done unto me, if I don't want it to be done to me, nor to my spouse, nor to my you know, nephews and nieces, nor to my parents. I don't want that kind of marketing done to my parents or to my nephews and nieces or to, to, the, you know, to the children of the world. Then why am I doing it to other people? That's the golden rule. It's just notice what we don't want to be done unto us or our loved ones. And then be careful not to do that to other people because we're creating bad karma and we're also creating a bad long-term model for our business, right? So lastly, irresistible, create your unique your irresistible offer or a statement. We don't have to do that anymore. What we, we are naturally interesting to our ideal audience, our true fans, when we show up as our authentic selves in exploration of our own journey and in genuine sense of, I want to help other people. That's it. This combination of I'm, I'm exploring my own journey and I, I'm doing it also because it might actually help other people who are on the same kind of journey as me. That is authentic marketing. And when we show up consistently, lots of things happen. We, we, we are, it's good for our creativity, which is good for our life vibrancy and our life interest and our life purpose. Showing up consistently, I've said many times in my videos, isn't about so that I can get more clients. That kind of mean, ends justifying the means is the, the whole problem here. Marketing is not a means to an end. Marketing is not a necessary evil so that I can, a chore, so that I can finally get clients and do the work that I'm meant to do. Marketing is the work you're meant to do. Marketing is part of the work you are meant to do. It's not, oh, I got to learn how to do Facebook ads. What a chore. What a, what a, it sucks so that I can do the work I, I love and do, get clients and, and provide services and products. Marketing is part of the work you're supposed to love because marketing itself can be a ministry. I've said this so often, but I don't think I can say it enough. Marketing itself is part of your life purpose as a business owner, as an authentic business owner. It's part of your life purpose. The marketing is where you show up consistently to explore your life force in creativity and in service to your audience, right? Which again, fulfills you, it, it makes you vibrant, it keeps you young, creativity keeps you young and keeps your mind clear and keep, uh, keeps your mind you know, sharp. <laughs> I wasn't very sharp. Keeps your mind sharp when you show up consistently to create content. It keeps you deepening your ideas and broadening your understanding of the world and of yourself, which is all good. It's really, marketing is really for your own personal growth. And by the way, it helps, happens to help other people. And by the way, it also happens to resonate with your true fans. And therefore, over time, they, you build, um, you build uh, worthy trust. You become trustworthy, which then makes your selling easy because you don't have to try so hard. You just say, hey, um, I think this is cool. I don't know if you guys think it's cool, but I've built something. I've created something. I've, I'm, I'm facilitating something. And I think it'll, I, I'm excited about it. And I think it'll help you. But you let me know by whether you, or not you buy, and hopefully before that, you could take surveys and have conversations with your, 
your fans to see if they really want that stuff before you you try so hard in selling it. Because if you try hard in selling it, and it's it's the people aren't buying. It's not. It also it's not because you don't have an irresistible offer or that you, you're not trustworthy. Because you know you just you're trying to find the match between what you're excited about and what your audience is excited about. That match is really what makes our marketing and selling so easy and so authentic because we don't have to try hard. We're just finding a match. That's it. So I hope this is helpful. Let's stop trying to create irresistible offers because in plain, plain and simple, it's manipulation and mind control. And it's really done for power and money. And like I said, it's bad karma and it's bad for your long-term authentic business. It doesn't work. It might create some short-term sales, but people trust you less and less over time. Okay, so stop with the irresistible offers and instead, yes, to showing up consistently, authentically in exploration of yourself, in service to others, and it just becomes a joy. It just becomes a joy. All Every marketing you do is a joy, and then the selling you do is a really curious observation of whether there's a match. That's it. All right. I hope this is helpful. I look forward to your comments. Go ahead and uh, add a comment below if you'd like, and I'm going to give you some time to do that while I check to see if there's any comments on my live video here. All right, so thanks for joining me, uh, Carissa and Jen and Marco. I so appreciate it. And um, let's see here. So I don't see any comments right now, but sometimes I can't see comments uh, right away. Um, thanks, thanks again, Jen and Carissa, Marco. Um, all right, have a great rest of your day. Remember, marketing itself can be a joy, can be fulfillment, and I believe it is part of the life purpose of authentic businesses. All right, take good care.